check the mic and make sure it sound right. And I hope the mic does sound right. What you see before you, if you're looking at your screen, are thumbnails from prior videos, prior videos specifically surrounding XRP. And what I'm doing, as you've been told many times, I don't like double work. But what I've done on this video, and I'm going to do a succession of videos similar to this, is I've put together excerpts from prior videos. For those who are new, because now XRP is making the news and now that it's not a dirty secret anymore, for those of us who've been around for years, and they're drawing their attention now to XRP, so people are going to come in. It, it was going to help you to know what you're really getting into here. And for those of us who have been in it, at least from DK Will's perspective, at least from my perspective, it will help you see how I see what's really going on. So this video is going to be making date references and things of that nature. But keep in mind, I'm doing this video on August, I think the 16th it is. Maybe it's the 17th. Pretty sure it's the 16th of 2023. So some of the things you are going to hear and see are going to be a couple years older than when I actually said them. But still applicable, applicable, which is why I'm doing this video. And I'm going to bring people up to speed from a different perspective than what the others are doing. I mean, many focus on the current events and they keep you caught up in that melodrama. I don't I don't particularly care about that melodrama, folks. I, I care about um, I care about the protocols behind it. I'll use that as an analogy. Like using the Internet, you don't know how HT. PPS, TTPS, you don't know how all that works. You just know you click, it works. I, I, I'm focused on, the, on on what's clicking in the background, making it work. And that's in, in regards to XRP too. So you'll see as this goes along, you should be able to follow the train of thought because I, I put this together in such a way that you can. But hopefully it will help you see XRP and the debacle surrounding it for what it really is as time goes on. Because keep in mind, I'm going to do a succession of videos of bringing out what's really going on in my mind with XRP. So let's get started. Hi, I'm DK Will, and this is DK Will Talk About It. I want to thank you for stopping by my channel and clicking on the video here. I'll ask that you please like and subscribe. It only helps me uh, get bigger and better and overcome the uh, YouTube requirements and algorithms to get me there. Today we're going to talk about World War III. And that World War III involves XRP. It also involves Stellar and Algo and other coins, but we're going to focus on XRP because as many of those in the crypto universe know, you know, the SEC sued XRP. And as a consequence, it seems to be stagnated. I'm going to try to help us look at it from a far more positive perspective and to see it for what I think it really is. It's World War III. And the war is primarily between two specific countries, both of which are among the top two for the largest economies on Earth. Inarguably, those two dominant economies are the United States of America and China. And China has been really coming at the U.S. by infiltration methodologies because conventional warfare is pretty much suicidal at this point, um, especially after the previous administration built the power and might of the military back up for this country. And so much like World War II, as that war dragged on and on and on until Hiroshima and Nagasaki, where nuclear bombs were dropped to end the war and cause a surrender. Something similar is going on today in World War III. And as the previous uh, screen showed, Hiroshima and Nagasaki are digital currencies. And this is designed to help us see the debacle that's going on with the SEC and Ripple 
from a totally different light. Three years ago, the chairman who filed this lawsuit on his way out the door of the SEC was holding meetings. And he was holding meetings with some very powerful players. How about counselor to the secretary of the United States Department of the Treasury? How about that? How about the Assistant Secretary for International Markets and Investment Policy at the United States Department of the Treasury on August 9th? How about meeting again with that counselor on August 14th? How about a phone call with President Donald Trump on August 16th? And Larry Kudlow, the director of the National Economic Council, on the same day. And how about on August 20th, a meeting at 11 a.m. with Ripple, including Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO, David Schwartz, Chief Technology Officer, and John Roscoe. Special Assistant to the President, at the time Trump, White House Office of Presidential Personnel. Hi, I'm DK Will. This is DK Will Talk About It. And tonight I want to talk about the latest developments in the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. Actually, SEC versus Ripple, Garling House and Larson lawsuit. And here's the up to update from James K. Filing. Shout out to you, sir, for helping us see this document. And the update reads, without us reading the whole document, we have reached an understanding reflecting a compromise by all parties pursuant to which the defendants may examine Mr. Hinman on various issues without triggering a privileged objection from the SEC. So they're working together. They're finding a compromise. And I'm hoping that this video here tonight helps all those in the XRP Army and community who are enraged at the SEC step back for a moment, think beyond oneself, and maybe see the light a little more clearly on what's really maybe going on here. And to do so, I would also refer everyone to a prior video I made, um, World War III XRP is the bomb. And hopefully this will be building upon that mindset and help my viewers see that this may be strategy. And we just need to be patient and understand that. And maybe it isn't just about us, but it is about us as in U.S. United States, if you live in the United States. On April 23rd, folks, of 2019, uh, you see that there, Ripple is receiving strong support on its way to success. On its way to success. The key here is that the startup has launched several products that will facilitate and accelerate the execution of cross-border transactions. As a result, the startup enjoys more and more attention. Whose attention? Pay very close attention to whose attention. Let's sew right here. It's hard to turn your head when you know the White House, the Federal Reserve, the IMF, and central banks are currently involved with Ripple. XRP wants to solve the security crisis in not only this country but worldwide. Ripple's involvement in institutions such as the World Bank, the IMF, the White House, the Federal Reserve, and other central banks is for many evidence of Ripple's growth. Of course, many XRP investors are also hoping for a positive effect on the price. Of course we are. But let's not be short-sighted. Because if we are at war, which we are, and I'll build on that as I go, maybe we should... Uh, be some more supportive of the strategy. 
Chris Larson is the subject of the lawsuit, but he was one selected to discuss with the IMF how blockchain and other new technologies can be used to streamline some of the activities in the financial landscape. The IMF head, Christine Lagarde, urged banks to step up and introduce new technologies to help them better serve their customers, and Ripple is one of these technologies. She believes that Ripple and similar blockchain companies will help banks cut costs and accelerate transactions worldwide. The World Bank considers XRapid, whose success correlates with the XRP price. Forget the price. This is not about the price right now, people. This is about the war. An international monetary body, the World Bank, recently published an article highlighting blockchain technology in the efforts of Ripple. The World Bank was optimistic about the impact of XRapid. Overall, the World Bank has been impressed by Ripple's blockchain solutions and is optimistic that the financial world will benefit. Follow with me, folks, here. Because we need to open our eyes to maybe not see this as adversarial. And if they can get along, maybe we should get along and understand that this is bigger than us. Ripple is not uninteresting for the Fed. Even the U.S. Federal Reserve can even take on one of Ripple's incorporated three solutions. In the report presented to the Fed, Ripple pointed out that it was crucial for the U.S. to explore and introduce new systems. Ripple pointed out that it was crucial for the U.S. to explore and introduce new systems. Even the White House is not unfamiliar with Ripple. The influence of Ripple has been made the project, has even made the project the subject of a discussion with the Trump administration. Ripple's former chief marketing strategist, Corey Johnson, revealed that the White House is currently researching cryptocurrencies and the Trump administration was impressed by the properties of Ripple and its products. The Trump administration was impressed by the properties of Ripple and its products. Jay Clayton was head of the SEC under President Donald Trump. This article was written in April 23rd of 2019. This article was written August 29th, 2019. Ripple confirmed to be making a statement on XRP security lawsuit while they were meeting with the SEC. Okay? On August 27th, 2019, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse decided to fight back in the XRP FUD war, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Okay? He said, I'm always struck by the questionable sources, I'm being generous here, spreading FUD about XRP and Ripple. Even more so over the last few weeks, even more so over this lawsuit currently. Thus, I feel compelled to comment. I feel compelled to comment, folks. And I hope that you see where I'm coming from by the time this video is over. He says here, Ripple's CEO Brad Garinghouse clearly confirms that we'll be hearing an official public statement from Ripple regarding the year-long security lawsuit. It's not the first one, this one. This could be huge. Ripple has confirmed engagement with massive regulatory bodies like the SEC. This is not new, people. If the SEC comes out and makes a statement alongside Ripple that XRP is indeed not a security, but is an exchange utility token, like other regulatory agencies, that could be the green light that U.S. banks need to actually use XRP for settlement on the back end. On that note, I want to refer you to a prior video, Follow the Money Means Follow the Banks. And I'll tie this all in. It's going to be a long video. It looks like I'll tie it all in, though. This is old. However, this, this is an image. Was there? Was the SEC chairman 
public calendar, he's meeting with both Ripple and the White House. Now, I did a prior video on this, but here, stay with me, people. Stay with me. August 24th, 2020. This precedes the lawsuit. Records reveal Ripple CEO met with senior Trump administration official in 2018. Are we seeing the trend here, folks? Newly discovered White House records show that the head of Ripple, Ripple met with senior Trump administration official twice in 2018. We know he messed with, met with Clayton. We know he met with Trump. We know he met with senior Trump officials. We know Larson is meeting with Trump. They're meeting with the World Bank. They're meeting with the IMF. They're meeting with the central banks. People. Do you really think that when the SEC entered that lawsuit against Ripple, they didn't have a plethora of more information than the little bit I'm sharing here with us right now? Of course they did. There's clearly a lot of homework going on. The White House in particular seems to be thinking about what it means to have 80% of Bitcoin mining taking place in China. And a majority of Ether mining taking place in China. I refer you again to the video. World War III. XRP is the bomb. Larson says U.S. risk losing stewardship of global financial system to China. This is SEC. Forget the this is SEC part. That's beginning the narrative. That's beginning the Trojan horse. I refer you to the video. XRP is the bomb. World War III. This was 11 October 2020. And he says here, Mr. Chris Larson, China's itching to be the one that designs the next financial system and that the U.S. is woefully behind. Speaking at the blockchain summit last week, he said the U.S. needs to realize it's in a tech cold war with China, with the fate of of control of the world's financial system at stake. Right now, China's winning, he said. Whose side does Chris Larson sound like he's on? I've heard Carlinghouse speak in a similar fashion. China is just itching to be the one that designs this new system. They've committed $1.4 trillion to a variety of technologies, and blockchain is right at the top of their list. It's not just China's pumping money into technology. The regulatory environment in the U.S. is actively discouraging financial innovation, he said. Or so it seems at this point. But we know they've been meeting now for years. Now, they are behind China, and there's a video I put out on that. Your phone will be your wallet. But how far behind are they really? How long did it take in World War II to come up with, design, and then deploy the atom bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Do you really think they did it within a month and then dropped the bombs? No, that was under development. I don't know how long beforehand, but those in charge did, just like they do with this bomb here. I just have to say, oh, sorry, I don't know what happened there. I just have to say it. In the U.S., all things, blockchain, digital currency, they start and end with the SEC, Larson said, referring to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Instead of pivoting to encourage U.S. innovation to keep up, they've done the opposite. Now, we know they were meeting right on a regular basis. He says, we're going to have to change up here or we're going to lose our leadership. Stewardship of the global financial system. That would be a tragedy. Whose side is he on? I think this man is on the side of those who live in the United States of America. I know this man has been meeting with Ripple's officials. I know this man has been meeting with the World Banks. I know this man has been meeting with the Federal Reserves. 
I know this man has been meeting with the SEC. I know that man and his CEO currently, they have all both been meeting. And they have been meeting with the president and his administration. We know these things, folks. So let me intimate to my viewers. Whenever the narrative is so pronounced and it grabs the majority's attention, I refer you to my recent video, Realize, Realize, Realize. But whenever the narrative becomes too powerful, it's time to look behind the curtain. And behind this curtain, is meetings that have been going on for years with the same administration that walked out with the lawsuit. We are at war for everything. And these countries, the United States and China, are at war for control, the two largest economies. War for control of the financial system. China has infil infiltrated the United States. I would guess that the United States has also infiltrated China. But we are at war. And maybe, just maybe, XRP is the Trojan horse. Maybe, just maybe, it's the illusion, it's the deception that goes with the art of war. I refer you to my video. World War III. XRP is the bomb. Again, from the art of war. It reads, all warfare is based on deception. That's darkness, folks. Hence, when able to attack, we must seem unable. SEC. When using our forces, we must seem inactive. And the court case. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. Discovery to last for another month or two. We must, when we're far away, we must make him believe we are near. Well, let's consider this. Now, the implications for Ripple, you had mentioned that perhaps the company would leave the U.S., like you're based in San Francisco right now. How realistic a scenario is that in the aftermath of this ruling? Well, look, we already have our second largest office today is London. Uh, we have a large office in Singapore. We have offices in Sao Paulo, Mumbai. Uh, so I view, you know, it's a very global business to begin with. I, I mentioned earlier, 95% of our customers are non-U.S., and that certainly has continued to be the case in, you know, during the, the, the lawsuit here uh, in the U.S., so I don't think it's going to change our business much, depending upon how it plays out. We have had you know almost growing 10x year on year in terms of volumes across what we call RippleNet, and that's in the middle of the lawsuit. So uh, I think I do think about this a lot in the context of what does it mean for the U.S. crypto industry? How how do we think about blockchain growing and thriving here domestically? And I think as a U.S. citizen, like I, I care, uh, and I think it's important for us to be competitive to have that clarity. So we have a lot more to go, a lot more thumbnails, um, a lot more videos that we'll bring out. But this is laying the foundation for the succession of videos I mentioned at the introduction. Because as you see in that last clip there, um, Ripple did not leave the United States, did they? Ripple did turn out successful in the lawsuit, didn't it? Folks, I think you're getting caught up. I think you're getting caught up, and I think that the system is designed to get everyone caught up. And I fight with a passion not to get caught up. But they never left the U.S. and they're not going to leave the U.S. Because, see, that's the Hiroshima. That's the Nagasaki. That's the atom bomb. And as this succession continues, I'll be bringing that out, too. How it's a Trojan horse. And at the same time, because it's a Trojan horse, it's not necessarily the desire of many in power, quite honestly, that everybody owns XRP because they need it for their system which is a good reason for us to hold on to it. But like I said at the introduction, I'll say it again, you need to know what you're getting into. You need to know what you hold, and it may require just a little bit more patience. 
I mean, it may require another year's worth of patience. It may require another two years worth of patience, but I can say pretty emphatically and with a level of confidence that probably I shouldn't have, that it won't be longer than a year and a half or two, and this baby will be flying. Now, don't get me wrong. There'll be some spikes along the way and take your profits. I expect spikes to come here soon, but for its real value to start kicking in, it's probably going to take till the year 2025 or so, and, and maybe the end of 2024 for it to start. And certainly on that trek from there, another three or four years to get to its true value. And by then, they will probably have confidently displaced and placed every XRP left on the planet. Where will we be when that time comes? Who knows? But what I do know is that this, the last world power, according to the Bible, is already in place, and that's the United States of America. Is the uh, Chinese government going to infiltrate it so much that the U.S. turns into a communistic uh, um, puppet? I doubt it. I doubt it. The, the U.S. is going to make its own choices. But the only world power to follow this one is not going to originate from the earth. So this is what it is. And right now, I'm still confident that because of that, the U.S. is not going to lose this battle against China. And I think it's all a ploy, which the succession of videos will lay out for you. How this is all part of the plan. I'm DK Will. This is DK Will Talk About It. And I've talked about it. Have a wonderful day. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right.